Thank you. Thank you. I, I think I must start by saying I think the title Internet of Things is quite interesting. An industry that was renowned for creating really fanciful titles and things. This wonderful revolution that we have got, and the best thing we could come up with is the Internet of Things. But hopefully the presentation will uh, explain why that is, and uh, we'll, we'll get some detail on that. So as mentioned, um, my, my um, day job is that I'm the vice president of our automotive activities around the world, which basically means I'm involved in setting the strategy and creating our uh, go-to-market activities around automotive. It's one of the coolest jobs in the world, because what's happened right now in, in my industry and across many industries is the fusion of technology with traditional products. So the IT departments today that sit inside of uh, many industries, but in particularly in automotive, now have a really big voice because they're shaping the future of, of, of that industry and they're shaping the products of that industry. It's a technology industry now. And as these products all start to come together, this has all been driven by the, what's behind the Internet of Things and the connected vehicle being in my particular section. So this makes me jump out of bed every morning um, with a real spring in my step because it's an exciting time for all of us to be in IT. So, what I'm going to try and do initially is try and shape what the Internet of Things is. I'm just going to assume that I'm going to kind of uh, update you all from scratch because that way it makes sure that we're all talking about the same thing. The physical world is something that's, that, that exists today but is underexploited. It's underutilized. We don't have the, um, the value that we should get from our planet, from our lives, from our physical being. It's a, it's a world that basically isn't connected. And what we have alongside that is the digital world. It's the world where uh, everything's connected, really cool devices connect to each other. It's really the cool club. It's the place where you know, we all get excited about, we have all these really nice devices, and they all talk to each other machine to machine. So what we talk about in terms of the Internet of Things is how do we fuse these together? Because up until now, there's been a big divide. There's the cool club, the digital world, and then there's the physical world that's not allowed to belong. And that means the physical world is not actually getting the advantages and the benefits that should come from our, our connected world and our connected age. And that's really where the Internet of Things bridges that. What the Internet of Things does is it allows anything, anything that you can imagine as long as it is physical and addressable to be connected to the web, to be connected to the internet, to allow us to actually start to communicate in a far more robust way than we'd ever imagined. And we've seen some of the data points that, that the previous presenters have talked about. It's going to push massively up the volume of things that are, uh, are connected up on the internet. And it's going to give us a whole bunch of new opportunities. And it is a very disruptive thing. It's going to disrupt every industry. It's going to disrupt every organization. It's going to force every organization to rethink how they run their business. It's going to change the world order in so many ways. And it's a very exciting time. It's a very cool time to be in, in, in IT. And uh, this, is, this is a time that we should all be excited by. And what it's actually going to deliver as an output is the ability for us to make really good, informed, and clever decisions about all sorts of things that affect our lives, affect our business, affect our planet. It's all those things that we have made decisions on in the past, but they've been largely uninformed decisions. We'll have the data points readily there because these, this data is going to be created by the Internet of Things. So hopefully that kind of gives you a feel for, for what we're talking about. So, What's the benefits that we're going to get from this? The benefit is that that intelligent thought process that the Internet of Things gives us, that real data that gives us better and faster decisions, it optimizes the processes that we will uh, have in our, our world. It's going to create huge efficiency gains and productivity gains within all sorts of industries and you know, manufacturing, right through to you know, financial services. It's going to give us the benefits in terms of health care that we kind of touched on on previous um, presentations. So it ultimately, it's going to improve the quality of our lives. It's going to come to a benefit that actually is achieved without the incremental costs that previously would have been required. So you can look at this and you can see it as the, the next revolution. Yeah, we've had the industrial revolution, the mass production, the Henry Fords of this world who started churning out cars from, from the Rouge plant in Detroit that went from the smelting works to a car at the other end. 
to the internet technology that we all got familiar with and we're all very comfortable with, to now the Internet of Things. And the Internet of Things really gives us a platform for our digital world. A digital transformation that people will talk about is transforming the way we live our lives. And the Internet of Things allows all sorts of things to become part of that. As I said, it's no longer an exclusive cool club of cool devices talking to each other. It's now anything that we can address can actually now be part of this world and actually give us this connection. And the other thing it does is it, it generates a huge amount of data. So the potential here in terms of big data, the analytics that go with that, is massive. But there's also some real challenges with that. I was talking to a company um, a few weeks ago in, in, in North America, and they are planning for, and this is an automotive company, but they are planning for potentially 40 to 80% growth in their data center capacity. And it's not because anything's particularly changed or, 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 or gone on, uh, on in our world, apart from they know that the connected vehicle, the digital transformation, and the Internet of Things is going to deliver so much data, and the analytical requirements of their data center is going to drive that sort of growth. Now, one thing I would say, they have an assumption that 90% of the data they're going to collect, at least, is going to be junk junk in as much as it won't be data they'll want to retain. It'll be data they might use short term, but it certainly won't be the data that they're going to hold in there. So that increase in their data center environment is really based on the 10%. And so it kind of gives you an idea of the scale of what the Internet of Things is going to do. And those um, charts that Andy Shu in terms of growth of connectivity, it's going to create this huge data model that we need to understand how to cope with. So what is the thing? So, um, uh, hopefully you started to get a feel for the Internet of Things, but a thing is basically any physical object that's addressable. It can be a, as simple as a sensor, it can be something that's more active. Um, it, it, it really has an, the ability to be anything from a light bulb to a very clever computer. It, it, it doesn't matter what it is, a thing is anything that is connected to the Internet and is able to deliver some data and it has to be addressable in some ways. We have to know where that data's come from. And that's the, um, the, the, the basis of what a thing can be. And it, and it can be mobile, or it can be um, stationary. So it doesn't need to be something in a physical location. It can be something that we wear about our person or something that's part of a vehicle or, 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 or device. So a thing is anything. That's, what, that's the, uh, the key message. And some just examples in terms of um, what we might talk about in terms of things. If we look in terms of our, our home life, um, white goods, the you know, classical um, uh, you know, fridge freezer and, and, and other devices at home, they're going um, to be the sort of things that get connected in this new world. Uh, things like fire um, detection, smoke detection, instead of just having an alarm that goes off in your house, I, you know, I might be stood on this stage and suddenly I get an alert on my phone to say my fire detector's gone off I'm in the UK. Not going to do me a lot of good as I stand here, so I hope that information will also go to the um, fire department. But the point being is the information is going to be getting out onto the internet. So these things are going to be connected, and it's going to give us a much richer sense of information. And hopefully it, it avoids uh, you know, um, problems if, if by not knowing what's happening. So there's lots of um, really great things that will come from the, this connectivity. From a personal items point of view, um, the car is, is, is and, and I'm, I'm doing a separate breakout session, which um, I hope some of you will join on um, to talk a little bit more detail about this. But but the car and the and the transformation that we're seeing in the car industry means that there's so many sensors, devices uh, uh, inside the car now that are generating so much information and data points that really do, does mean that the, the device, which is the car, the connected vehicle, becomes a, a really rich environment. And, and the, the personal interaction you then take to that car um, allows your life to be enhanced greatly. And, and that's just one example, industry-wise, of how digital transformation and the Internet of Things is really starting to change the way we see and think about our, um, our lives, our vehicles, our ability to, to transport. And things like credit cards, passports, they're all going to start to become connected. So when you go through, they're going to know before you get to the uh, passport check that you're actually uh, there. They're going to have the information. We've already got RFID-type um, technology within uh, many passports around the world. 
The in industry side of things is, I guess, quite obvious. You can think about there's so many examples in terms of manufacturing um, that, that already has um, um, advanced massively in terms of sensing and technology that we can use. And again, that's only going to rapidly increase as people start to exploit the ability to, to um, sense, detect, and understand what's going on in a connected way that they've never been able to do before. From an outdoor point of view, um, our infrastructure is going to change in incredibly. Um, you know, we saw some examples on previous slides again, but you know, everything from our, our street lighting to um, uh, traffic um, guidance, Anything you can imagine which is an infrastructure environment will be connected and that connection will allow us to start to be much smarter about the way we consume the energy, the technology. So street lights can be controlled in terms of the amount of time they're on, the, the, the environmental uh, requirements. So if there's a heavy rainstorm, you might want street lights on when they wouldn't normally be on. So the sensing will actually kick that into play. There's a whole bunch of things that can start to really um, be very interesting. And again, you, you then start thinking about the, the people side of it. You know, we had the example earlier on of the guy who's now connected to the internet, which to me is quite a spooky idea, and I'm not sure I want to go that far. But um, they, they're, we all start to see these wristbands, people as they, as they exercise, starting to track their exercise, then starting to feed that into a connected way into the internet. So these are all great examples of what we're talking about. So hopefully you're getting a feel for what the internet of things is about, and it's not just about computers. It's about all the devices creating the data that we can use and enrich our lives. So. Data um, from these things it will actually um, come in a whole bunch of um, guises. So we've got these things and these sensors and these things generating data. The type of data we're going to get is going to really start to make us understand the impact on our environment, the impact on our planet, the impact of, of, of us um, doing our, our, our day job. So if you look in the... In the um, the world of agriculture, we can start to really work out what crop rotations we want to do. We can start to really understand, rather than predict things, we can really measure and understand the impact of what we're doing and where we're using our land. We can start to think about um, all sorts of um, environmental impacts on lots of um, types of industry, lots of different ways that we run our lives, things that are personal to us, how we um, decide whether we're going to um, need an umbrella as we go to work, or at what point we might need to put that up, because I might be told that it started raining five minutes down the road, so I can have my umbrella up before the rain hits me. There's a whole bunch of really ni nice little things to have will enrich our lives. They'll just become staple. They'll become the way we live our lives. It'll just be a very different world that we, uh, that we operate in. And this slide really is, is kind of the thing that says, what's driving the Internet of Things? What's making us move towards this? So it's all good to talk about the technology, but as we all know, technology only really works when it gets adopted. And there's a number of things that are, are, are driving this revolution. First and foremost, digital transformation is driving this. The, this thirst for the digital need um, is really actually getting uh, the whole world switched into wanting to change and, in, and really use um, the, the digital world in a greater way. There's more connected devices than there's ever been before. The decreasing cost of connectivity is a major contributing factor. I can remember when um, RFID tags dropped below 10 cents, um, probably about 10, 15 years ago, and everyone said that's going to change the way we uh, have our world. And indeed it did in lots of ways, things like retail shopping, etc. It's, it's become just a staple of how that industry works. So as we go forward, the fact that the cost of connectivity of devices has come down to a, to a manageable level, it means more devices can get onto this Internet of Things. Maturity of networks is far greater than it ever was, so the type of bandwidth connections we now have available makes all these things possible. The, the fact that we've now got um, uh, more, more addressable um, uh, address codes with IPv6 um, means that we've got the ability to put billions more devices because everything has to be addressed to be on the Internet of Things. Um, efficiency in terms of energy, so battery consumption, we can put tiny little batteries into these devices in a cost-effective way and actually make these things work. And, and the final piece is really the whole mobility and the, and, and the demand from the world for instant gratification and the fact that we want data and we want an answer to everything and we want it um, yesterday. I, I'll tell you a little anecdotal story. I was watching a quiz program at home with my son and um, the quiz master um, asked a question and 
we both had a different answer to the question. And the, the, the quiz master then turns to the screen and says, we'll tell you the answer after the break. And of course, I was quite happy. I had two minutes to wait before I'd be proven to be correct. He straight away Googled the answer. Because he's in this world very different to me, even in that short generational change, that two minutes to him was just totally ridiculous. He needed to know the answer straight away. Unfortunately, he was right, which I would rather wait the two minutes, but anyway. But it just tells us the way we are in terms of we've changed the way we see our lives. We want all this data, we want it immediately, and we want to be informed about the decisions we're making. That's really what's fueling the Internet of Things. The other thing that's really starting to see, we, we, we touched these points earlier on, you know, 50 billion things by 2020, and that sounds kind of ridiculous, seven things for every man, woman, and child on the planet, and it's just in, incredible. And, you know, that point I made earlier, you know, $1 uh, entry point for an Internet of Things device. Yeah, these are the things that are really enabling this to become a reality and allow us to uh, exploit it. So what we're talking about is moving from machine-to-machine -machine type connectivity that we all understand to be the digital age that we've all been part of for a long time to the Internet of Things which says anyone can join this cool club. Any device, anything, anything that we can get addressable and physical that we can actually get data from can be part of the Internet of Things. And that's the real fundamental shift that we've, um, that we've got. So having tried, hopefully, that's described an elevated pitch what the Internet of Things is, and hopefully you're all still with me and, and I'll, I'll, I've kind of explained myself well. What I'm now going to try and do is give you kind of the architectural view of how this now comes together and how these services will be brought together by large organizations uh, and how we're all going to start to be able to access this. So the first point to make is there's, there's two types of um, things in effect. Um, there's active things and there's passive things. So the active things are, are, are sensors that are actually generating data. They are things that are actually doing something to enrich the, the uh, data points. The passive are simple things that are saying, I'm here. I'm here. It's a location. I, I, I'm available. You can talk to me. That's a passive um, uh, mode activity. Both of those things are, 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 are going to you know, be classified as things. The next thing to understand is there's several ways um, that we can actually get connection to the internet. Because the fundamental thing to be on the internet of things is you have to be on the internet. Um, I'm pretty obvious, I know, but I just want to make that point. So there's two ways of doing it. You can either have a gateway type technology that allows multiple things to be brought into the internet, or you can have things that directly go into the internet. They have their own ability to connect to the internet. So the, you know, the different things will have different ways of getting to the internet. They can be wired or wireless, they can be fixed, stationary, or they can be mobile. As I said before, it doesn't really matter, but this is kind of how the, the, the structure will work. So the solution architecture is layered up. And there's a number of layers here that I'm going to go through them reasonably quickly, but hopefully give you a feel for how it works. The bottom layer, the one I've been really talking about in terms of the things, is what's known as the edge layer. So that's where the things sit, that's the kind of entry point, that's where all these um, devices um, are sitting. The next layer up is the gateway layer, and the gateway layer really is the way that we get to the internet. So these are the, 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 the um, products that actually enable us to get a connection for the things to, to get there. The third layer up is then the network layer. So this is the traditional internet that we all know and love, and everyone understands this. This is kind of where the, um, the internet actually starts to come into play, and this is delivered in terms of a, what we call the network layer. Then above that is where we start to get more sophisticated. This is the middleware layer. This is where we have to do the clever things. This is where we have to have good security, good control of data, analytics. We have to be able to drive this a little bit in terms of a shape because this is data overload, if not. This is like drinking from the fire hose. So this is the middle that we layer where we start to do something with what's coming out of the internet. And then the top layer is the app layer. And this is where we start to make it really interesting because we start making it usable. So we start to do something really with it that allows us to actually use that data. So that's the, uh, the app layer that will get massively um, developed There'll be lots of things that go on in this space to enrich our lives, enrich the way we do business, and create a very different world that we're in. So hopefully that makes sense in terms of that's the, um, the, the, the architectural structure that we've got. Now, at this point, I just want to kind of make one um, strong point. This is going to be a catalyst for cloud computing. 
The Internet of Things will fuel the need for cloud computing like nothing else. Because the one thing that is really important to understand is it's impossible for any one organization or company or group to build this for themselves and house this for themselves and try and run this as, a, as, a, as their own environment. There'll be different parts of um, the Internet of Things where companies will want to retain some um, autonomy. But the, the real truth of this is that this is going to drive us all into a collaborative, shared world where we all have to try and work together and share content. Now, there's a lot of industries, and again, I'll go back to the automotive industry because it's the one I know very well. Five years ago, if I went and spoke to a number of automotives and said, you guys are all going to have to work together. You're going to have to share data. You're going to have to try and work in some uh, common environment, and that's going to be to the benefit of all. <laughs> that would have been a very quick conversation because they would not have wanted to entertain that. Today, five years later, they are collaborating. They're slowly starting to work together. This will drive it even further because this data is gold dust. This is data that everybody needs, but you have to share it. You can't try and generate all this on your own. Again, some things will be, but a lot of it. So this will actually drive cloud computing in, in, a, in a real way, a big catalyst for that in part. Now, moving up, I'd just again try and build the layers up for you and, and, and explain that. So we've got the cloud side, and it can be anything from the um, sort of private cloud onto a public cloud and you know, kind of touched on. But then against these layers, we then have on the edge layer the, um, the sensors and suppliers. These are the companies will start to develop sensors and, um, and, and deliver ways of creating um, the things that sit on the Internet. Then at the um, gateway layer, we've got the communications companies, the ones that are actually delivering communication. Above that, we've got the internet service provider layer. So that's where that's pretty obvious in terms of that's where the internet comes from. The middleware layer, again, is going to be um, service providers and cloud providers. So that's where that will come into play. That's the companies that will operate and, will op and do operate in that space. And then above that, there's the customers and also the application providers. So there's, a, there's kind of a feel for the layers as we build them up, and these are where the different individuals or organizations play. Now, here's a question for you, and there's no prize. I'm just very interested to see uh, your thought process on this. Out of those five layers and those five areas of offerings, I want you just to, for a moment, think which areas you think Fujitsu play in. So I kind of want to just see whether you kind of have a good feel for our, our capability and as an organization what we would do. So just a few moments, just looking at that, think about where we are. Now I'm going to reveal the answer. So again, instant gratification. I haven't left you waiting for too long. All areas. Now, here's another test I'm very interested in. And let's have an honest answer. Hands up everyone who thought we were in all those areas. OK, OK. Glad the rest of you are here, because at least we're filling in the gaps for you. Um, how many thought uh, three? OK, that's, Andy says that we're on a journey. <laughs> we're educating, which is good. So hopefully you've got a feel from today's sessions and from the uh, work that we're doing over the, today that you're going to get a better feel for the fact that we do, in fact, cover the full spectrum. And, um, in fact, if we look at um, uh, individual uh, industries, and again, I'll give you an example in automotive just because I know it very well, but we do everything from the in-car technology of the car, so the sensors that are developed in the car, right through to what is the digital transformation and the digital experience of driving a car, right through to the security. You've seen Palm Vane outside, that's been integrated into cars, but also the cyber security, the big data, and, and, and the specific point solutions for that industry. The same is true for many industries and many verticals. So we have a uniqueness that we can actually deliver this on a global stage. So this is something that you hopefully will start to understand with Fujitsu um, as we carry on discussion. And the other thing I think is important to, to um, understand here is this is a complicated space. This is an area that the business will need to actually adopt. Digital transformation and the Internet of Things is an, an unavoidable change. So as an organization, if your organization isn't already thinking about this, planning this, and working around this, then you should be. And if you are going to do it, you ought to be working with an organization that understands the full spectrum of what we're talking about. So it's a, it's a, it's a definite warning for everyone who's not got themselves onto this journey already. Now, we've come back to the, um, 
delivering value in this hyper-connected world. I prefer hyper-connected world. I think it's a, it's a much better way of describing things. But we're looking at this in three areas, and I think this was touched on before. There's the human-centric innovations. So this is about how we increase the well-being and we empower people. And some of the other presentations today talked about that, and some of the uh, Digital India initiatives are all about empowering people, and that's very much what the human-centric society is about from a Fujitsu perspective. The second thing is this around business innovation, and, and we see business innovation become a massive part of this. I mean, if you look at, for instance, the manufacturing space, manufacturing for a number of years has been using lean processes, continuous and focused improvement, trying to generate efficiencies through the way they work. Now, if you think about overlaying that with the Internet of Things, and you create all these new sensors, and you create this remote control of these sensors as well, you can really enhance what you can achieve and the, and the maximizing of output you can achieve from a manufacturing plant. So business innovation is going to be a massive part of what, again, fuels and drives this change. Um, social innovation is the other one, which is really about just creating better public services, making sure that everybody is um, catered for and looked after in our environment in a better way, using and exploiting our physical assets in a better way by measuring, controlling, and understanding them. That's the benefit of what the Internet of Things gives us. So yeah, if we look on the, in the manufacturing side, and I think this is an interesting stat just because it's 27.1. I always think it's quite amusing when we get the point one or something in there. But in the, in just the industrial manufacturers are predicting that the Internet of Things will actually increase revenue by 27%. So 27% what, 7 revenue increase basically says capacity is going to be improved by the fact that they've got the Internet of Things. And that's real data based on some, some, some good analytics that says that's what's going to happen. And it's really around what I was talking about in manufacturing, that we're going to be able to create much greater efficiency. And Fujitsu are already helping a number of manufacturers around the world with this journey, developing this um, technology. We're giving real, these real outputs and starting to deliver on these uh, type of uh, growth patterns. The other one which is really interesting is um, enterprise wearables. And, and this, this one kind of surprised me, really. The, 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 the comment there that says that enterprise wearables will surpass lifestyle, lifestyle wearables within the next five years. Now, I, I find that kind of almost amazing to think about, but this is where we were talking about using technology to help people in their day-to-day -day jobs. You know, the field engineer who's got a, a, an overhead um, uh, headset on, which is giving him real data, so as he looks at everything, it's telling him how to assemble something, how to be safe, making sure that his, um, you know, in this, in this instance, he's not going to electrocute himself or he's going to be in a, in a, in a controlled environment. It, it, it reduces the um, human error. It, it gives a greater degree of control and efficiency. So these things are going to happen, and... Um, and also, it's going to be able to predict weather conditions, so he's not going to want to be up a, a, an electrical pole when it starts to rain. So knowing that these things are coming and being able to control that and having the, the technology to, to help them. So these are things, again, we're developing this technology, we're supplying this technology already. The world is changing around us all the time, and, and these are real things and real examples that, that I want to share with you folks. Now, this one was touched on earlier on. I, I, I like the fact that there's some data on, on how much data we can get from a cow. And this is from dairy herds. And uh, I don't quite know where all the sensors are and what data we're collecting. I don't necessarily want to know all of the data we're collecting. But, but in effect, you know, 200 megabytes from a cow data per year is kind of interesting and, and neat, I think. And it kind of gives you the, the reason for putting that up. It really does start to make you think, what this really does. You know, when we talk about the Internet of Things and we're talking about measuring the use of um, agriculture with a cow and what we can do to enhance that cow's life and the efficiency of what we do with that cow, it's kind of really interesting. It really does start to make you think differently about the, the technology around us. And smart cities is um, another area that, that is definitely a, um, a topic of conversation that everyone's interested in. Um, I think there's a, there's a genuine view that smart cities is more than just about technology, it's about control and increasing the value for the, um, the, the inhabitants of a city. 
in lots of ways, but, but the, the number of technologies that we're using in smart cities, and, and I was talking to um, uh, Transport for London a few weeks ago, and they've got a um, challenge, and, and you know, it's probably similar in many cities, they're, they're going to have in the next five years about two million more people going into the city of London each day. Now that's, for somebody who travels into London quite regularly, quite a frightening thought, because it's a terribly congested space already. And um, what they're thinking about is how do they make this work more efficiently. And if you start thinking about the Internet of Things and the sensors and the digital experience of, of, of maybe a connected vehicle and the, the way that I can perhaps predict my journey into work or my, predict my journey to a meeting or to a conference and I can be guided by the environment to tell me where to go, where I can park for free, get an electronic recharge of my battery-powered car in the future, and how I can then start to be navigated away from bottlenecks and they can start to control the flow, the smart city starts to really work. So these are really examples of, of things that are, are here today, they're technology that we have today, they're things that we're trying to help um, organizations and cities to, to deliver on, and that data analytics, are, analytics around that are really important. And, it, and it's endless, it's absolutely endless what you can start to do once you start to create the, uh, the Internet of Things. So in summary, we're talking about um, balance between improving our, our lives and enriching our lives and innovating and growing business. We're talking about making sure that everything's catered for, that we're building a bright new future and we're delivering to ourselves something that is, is taking the physical planet and the physical world into the digital age. It's no longer just an exclusive club for the, the digital devices. It's not just the cool club anymore, it's everything. Everything's gonna be in our digital age and that is what is uh, in the value of the Internet of Things. And the other thing I did want to just finish with, because I'm, um, I'm a couple of minutes left on my time, so I just wanna kinda give you some thought on this area. Um, I think this is particularly uh, applicable in India because I have a real sense for, for, for India being ahead in this game, and I think I would encourage you not to lose, um, lose this space. There's a thinking around what Gartner would call bimodal, and what Fujitsu referred to as digital balance, and it basically says the traditional ICT organization works in robust process, and it's a, it's a, it's a, a very process-driven, structured way of delivering IT. And it's for a reason, because it becomes dependable and usable IT. At the same time, the digital transformation of our planet and our world and every single industry is driving a fast rate of change. So all companies who want to succeed have to have a dual way of doing things, the dependable route and the more innovative fast route. And that innovative fast route has to short circuit some of the processes, otherwise they fall behind. And it's, there's, there's no choice in this. It's something that companies are having to embrace and having to do, and it's a, it's a, it's a charge on trying to develop um, uh, business of the future. Now, many Western cultures struggle with this, many Western organizations struggle with this, because they have this inner belief that says, the tried and tested way has served us well, we've been successful on that, it's very difficult to culturally shift an organization to start thinking about going faster, or in parallel. I feel that in India, you have a real innovation culture. You culturally are able to deal with that idea and you can accelerate things and you've proved that. I think my, my perception is that you're encouraging yourselves to be more structured and be more controlled. And some of the things I've heard is to say, let's put more structure into place because then we could be even greater. All I would caution is to say, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater would be the saying that we would use. Make sure that you actually keep the advantage that you have. And the advantage you have is you innovate very quickly. And I think that is a cultural thing. So that, again, it's an observation. So I think that digital balance is something to understand. So as we drive forward the internet of things and drive the change, that's an important consideration. So my summary. So why does the internet of things matter? Well, hopefully you've got a sense of what's gonna happen and what's happening in our world. The revolution is just taking us up a notch. It's about taking what was just a digital platform and our ability to do machine-to-machine -machine type connectivity to a whole new scale. It will fundamentally change every business on this planet. It will change all of our lives. It will change the order of who controls the business. So in the car manufacturing space, the car manufacturing dominant players of today need to innovate and change or they won't be the companies leading tomorrow because there will be a new world order that comes out of digital transformation, the Internet of Things. It's something that we have to embrace and do something with. 
remote monitoring and all the things you can imagine in your world and the ability to control the world from a remote state is going to be a reality. So this is going to create new opportunities, new values, new services, new companies. In the same way that the cellular phone world created carriers and new companies were born and became big dominant players, the same thing is going to happen again. A complete new value chain is going to be achieved in so many different industries. And the companies that succeed will be the ones, again, that are embracing and changing with it. And it's a better world, a better quality of life, and it's for all of us. So this is a really exciting time to be in IT. You know, gone are the days when the IT department was a grudge purchase. In the, more recently, it's been a necessity and a business enabler. Going forward, IT is going to be something that really is a catalyst for business growth and change in the way that we run our business and run our lives. So I think it's great to be involved in this industry. I think all of you will hopefully feel the same way. I think it's a very exciting time to be uh, uh, work in this. And the last thing I would leave you on is facing all these challenges, facing all these um, massive changes in our industry, make sure you work with Fujitsu. Thank you.